Welcome back again to our new series. Yeah. Music, is it good though? Yeah. This is the second attempt at recording this because my colleague, esteemed as she is, is crap. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, forgot to delete the stuff off the memory card, so it just didn't have enough room to record. So we were sat here for 10 no, minutes? Not even that, I don't think, Was to be not? fair. So it's not too bad then. We're no. all right. So this week we'll be reviewing the album... The Hour um, of Bewilder Beast. Yeah, by Badly Drawn <laughs> Boy. Um, before we do get into that, we wanted to kind of go over how we prefer to listen to music, mm-hmm. whether we like use headphones, speakers, like however we tend to do it. Yeah. So you go ahead first. Um, so I, for this, I've been preferring to listen to it on my iPad and just listening to it quite passively, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I'll try to make, take as much notice, but as you'll probably see in my review of this album, I have struggled to remember most of it okay. <laughs> um, because I've been listening to it passively. Whereas in the past, I will prefer to listen to music in the car Mm-hmm. Um, I prefer to listen to like hard rock music, foot to the floor in my yellow mini, going about five miles an hour, wind in my hair that I don't have anymore. <laughs> wind blowing the hair, clean off your head. <laughs> yeah, this is a toupee headband. Um, Didn't pay a lot for it. No, and if I'm in the gym, um, I'll use my Power Beats, I think that's what they're called. Mm-hmm. Um by Dre Beats and yeah they're really good for being on the treadmill and things but as I was saying on the previous take of this that I'm not going to hide away from um, I've stopped listening to music uh, for a fun which is weird but as we discussed last time it's because we're stuck in a rut and some, I've mm-hmm. found it quite boring just listening to the same music over and over yeah it's easy to lose touch with what's what's new out and kind of thinking back to when we were teens I think we were fairly good at like going to gigs a lot, mm-hmm. like keeping up with the bands, seeing yeah. what new bands are coming out, reading Kerrang, Metal Hammer, things like that, knowing what's kind of going on. Yeah. Whereas for the past 20 years, it's been, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember for the past 20 years. No, it's not because I was 12. 12. <laughs> <laughs> Our lives stopped at 12. Yeah. Let's say for the past 12 ish years, then yeah. we've not really been keeping up with anything, just listening to music that we already knew anyway. Yeah. And Bar the odd songs that would kind of filter through, just not really knowing what's going on in music and not appreciating new music that's coming out. Yeah. Just to kind of clarify, the album that we're listening to isn't new music. It no. came out in the year 2000, but it's new to us. But like, it's, it's uh, I don't know if you call it a catch-22, but it's a difficult situation between catching up with what's new and then all the music they will have missed. Yeah. Because there was a lot of music in the 90s, for example. I wasn't really interested in music then. Yeah. And it came out when we were nine, really, yeah. didn't it? So You were more into your horror films as yeah. a nine-year-old, weren't yeah. you? I wanted to see little virgins getting killed, and that's still the case. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you prefer listening to those to your music these days? It's mostly through my headphones, Sony MX3s, RXM3s, one of They're them. They're definitely Sony. They're definitely <laughs> Sony, I can guarantee that. Um, they've got noise cance- noise cancelling. The kind of cover your whole layer, you can basically shut your eyes and get in the music sort of feeling and just really lose yourself in it. Aside from that, occasionally in the car if I'm going out and around, out and about to places. Otherwise, occasionally on the, I don't want to say the word, A-L-E-X-A. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> in case it triggers anything in the yeah. room. No, it's off. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so occasionally on that just in the living room, sat playing PlayStation or something with that on to listen to it. Mm-hmm. Mostly through the headphones, but then occasionally other other ways as well. Yeah. Also, we were going to discuss, like, our preferred... I know you mentioned briefly there, but, like, oh, preferred okay. genres of things that we'd listen to, because we are going to have some bias. Say, if we're listening to something, I don't know, that's really out of the realms of what we've come across before, mm. we might automatically be a bit, well, this is a bit different. I'm not well, there was a 1001 album pick today that I was already really familiar with. It was Sheer Heart Attack by Queen, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah. that is what I really like. It's old old rock music. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also like blues music from the 20s because I'm a massive hipster <laughs> in that regard. You are massive. Um, yeah. Everyone likes a bit of everything. It's such a stupid thing to say. Oh, I've got an eclectic music taste. Well, you'd be stupid not to. Yeah, like you must be so, <laughs> so sheltered to only be like, 
I only listen to metal or I, I only listen to jazz. We have like, hit, come across those people before. Yeah, but like, <laughs> how, like, it's like going your whole life only eating celery. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, I might really <laughs> like celery, but there's so much out there that I've not ate. Mm-hmm. And just closing yourself into that is just, it's very limiting. And I, personally, I don't get why people do that. If they get joy out of it, fair enough, but it's not something for me. No. Uh, yeah, your preferred genres, did we... Well, it's mostly blues and hard rock. Yeah. That would be my go-tos. Like, yeah. I can't, I've never really been steered away from them since I was, like, 16. I used to really like heavy metal, but as I've got older, it's... There's all the angst and stuff and the things about wizards and stuff. I've just gotten <laughs> away from it. It's like... You're not into dragons anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Mainly, I like if I was to veer straight towards a particular genre, probably like pop punk, mm. like early noughties punk, I guess. Um, also, a lot of like nineties alternative music I do like, like Plum Tree, mm. like Plum, Plum Tree are great. <laughs> eels, wow. I'm going to see Eels next year. Like, are they like, a nineties band? Yeah, I think they started around the nineties. Yeah, so I, I, I thought are they a band or a man? He's a guy. Right, okay. I, I'm, I think he's probably got like a band that he tours with, but he's just the one guy who writes it. Yeah. So yeah, that's more where I veer to, but I am trying to branch out a lot into other stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Just to show how out of touch I am anyway. Like my partner was trying to buy tickets for a band called Black, Black Pink. Pink. She was telling me about them just then, yeah. This, mar- uh, this morning. And was it? Friday. Uh, because I've got tour dates in London. So like in 10 minutes. Yeah. Never heard of them. <laughs> And the tickets were like a hundred quid for like the cheapest ones. There were some tickets going for nine hundred pounds. That's yeah. not even on resale. K pop's big these days. Yeah. We'd listened to some in the car yesterday and there wasn't an announcer of it that I could go, Yeah, that's Korean. Right. It just sounded like pop. Anyway, we're digressing. Hmm. The point of this episode is to discuss the hour the of the hour world of beast yeah. <laughs> by Badly Drawn Boy. Yeah. So what was your knowledge of Badly Drawn Boy before the album? Nothing. Yeah, same. Yeah. I'd so, seen him on TV. And you? I just thought, oh, he looks like Justin Lee Collins. <laughs> <laughs> but I found out he's from, well, this isn't to say Justin Lee Collins couldn't be from Manchester, but I found out since he's from Manchester yeah. area, isn't Only he? Only from Down Road. Yeah. Um, and he did the About a Boy soundtrack, which is a film I love, but had absolutely no idea Badly Drawn Boy was there. I always thought he was one of those people that critics sneered at, but... When I've read about this album, they absolutely loved it, didn't they? Yeah. Well, I'd never even heard of him. Like, really? before it came through, because it was one that came through on this generator, the Thousand and One Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. And I literally hadn't heard of him. I just thought, Badly Drawn Boy, that's a bit of a weird name. Let's mm. give it a listen. But yeah, it just was not on my radar whatsoever. No. I think I remember watching him maybe on top of the pops in the, well, it must have been early 2000s, because this 99 was his first album, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, 2000 this came out yeah whenever I thought of Badly Drawn By I always just thought rap for right. some reason but I don't know why no, even I though don't. it couldn't be further from it even though there is a track on this album called Body Rap which is really bad right <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the standouts for me because of how bad it was right I'd have to re-listen to that one because I guess the nature of having it on your phone well I guess anyway whether you're listening to it on CD or whatever I don't tend to know the names of the tracks. I'll no. listen through it, but I'll, I couldn't tell you which one body rap is. I'll know it when I hear it. It says, says the word body rap over and over again. I'd have to listen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess starting off, like, first impressions of the album. Like, yeah. um, <laughs> the first time I listened to it, I didn't listen to it all. And that was my problem with it. Because I think I must have listened to about 10, 10 songs. And it's like 17 songs long, isn't it? Is it? It's 18 songs long. So the first time I listened to it, I was I listened to about half yeah, of right. it. 18. And um, <laughs> my stamina just went. And right. I thought, it's, what I listened to was good, apart from body rap. <laughs> and then, like, I just thought, I think I listened to up to the instrumental, The Hour of Bewilderbeast, or Bewilderbeast, Bewilder whatever Beast. it's called. Yeah. Um, and then that was it. I just thought, that's me done. Try not to tap on the table as much because it's picking it all up. Yeah. You didn't like that last time, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how about you, first impressions? First impressions, I was like, okay, look at the album art. Looks pretty cool. Just there's a lot going on there. Can't really say what. Apparently it's, um, it's Vitruvian that Man. Vitruvian Man, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. 
It's like a Frankenstein Vitruvian man. Yeah. yeah. I think they had to remove because I was reading up on it, they had to remove Woody Allen's face from it, I think. Yes. For the American one, I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 Pretty much immediately in, in as I went into it. Like the first song that I forget the name of The Shining. The Shining. It's kind of got that long <laughs> intro bit. Yeah. And I was thinking, okay, this is pretty cool. And then once it starts with the guitar and the singing, yeah, I was hooked straight yeah. away. I, I just thought this song. is really, really nice. I like this song. Mm. And then, yeah, I listened to it from front to back. Didn't even realise it was 18 tracks long. I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm, sure I'm in like for it. this now. <laughs> well, I've, like I say, that was my problem with it. I only listened to the other nine to our ten songs the other day. All and... right, it's been, didn't listen to it until like a few days ago. To well, the end. no. Like, right. I, d- I just thought, uh, I could only get halfway through each yeah. time I listened to it. But no, it's because I'm a busy guy as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was quite disappointed with the last half of the album anyway. Like, there wasn't anything that made me think that was really good. So when I messaged you saying, oh, yeah, this is really good, that was because the first half, yeah? he's fun- yeah. To me, he's front-loaded the album right. with all the best songs. Right, I get yeah, Yeah, because when you said, you texted me saying this is really good, I thought, right, okay, you've listened to it right through. You're on the same page as me here. This is great. <laughs> yeah. An idea that I had, because we would, last week, we did top three songs off the album yeah. each, just for a bit of fun. Could you guess what one of mine might be? And I'll guess what one of yours might be. Okay. Like, just basically... Can we just eliminate... The first song then, because we both just we both know that we like that the shining. <laughs> We've also both already discussed that we really like the instrumental Bewilder Beast. Yeah, yeah. So outside of that, so I'm guessing for you, aren't I? Yes, you're guessing for me. So I do, should I guess first? Go for it. So I'm gonna. Go, I bet you like body rap, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with you like pissing in the wind. Yeah, that's in my top three. Yeah. Okay. I reckon I'm going to get yours wrong based on what I've already said, but I thought one of your favourite would be Disillusion. No. No? Well, never mind then. Other than that, probably everybody's stalking. Yeah, love yeah. that. I thought it's, I mean, it's more like, rocky, isn't it? Yeah, the first two or three songs on that album are brilliant. Yeah. I mean, like the first ten songs, for me, you could have released the other one as a second album. Right. Because I bet I'd have enjoyed that more, maybe, if, I'd, if it hadn't have been such a big bit of work. But well, it is, like, I know you've mentioned it's 18 songs long. According to Apple Music, it's an hour and four minutes long, yeah. which is quite long for an album. Yeah, normally it's like, I've got quite a short attention span anyway, like 30 to 40 minutes, that's me. Yeah. Done. I can't even watch a film all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think we have to take into context as well. Like, this is his first album. He said on Wikipedia, whether it's true or not, that he'd released a few mixtapes beforehand that got quite successful in the underground. Okay. So, like, we You all... can kind of see that because it's very old, isn't it? Yeah, so, but the... It's quite ambitious, isn't it, for a debut album with, like, yeah. all the orchestral stuff on there. And to have an, a debut album that's 18 songs long, I mean, yeah. it, it's like... It's not even as if he's thrown everything that he knows and it's just, like, a mess. Yeah. It's... Like, it's even though I don't like some of the songs, it's... Very well orchestrated and, and com- composed, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah, it's really good. That That's one of the things that I really thought listening to it, and that it's it's a perfect album for having big, thick headphones over your ears and just kind of losing yourself in it. Mm. Because there's so much going on without sounding like there's so much going on. Like, yeah. it's not too much, but there's a, a hell of a lot going on, and it just sounds nice in doing it. Yeah. There was some of the songs where I thought that his vocals were too treated right like I don't mind because of all you're tapping the table sorry <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna lock my Tie arms up my hand on back <laughs> but some of it it works but um, I don't know it's like listening to a Bon Iver album have you ever heard that yeah you showed me Bon Iver like, a few years ago it's and... fine for a bit and then it's like just use your normal voice if you can actually sing yeah just use your normal voice but that's just me <laughs> so your top three then so I've guessed one of them everybody's talking well, my top three are um, The Shining, that, and is it Another Pearl? Yes. That was a really good song. Pearl. So again, both of our top threes are very different songs, which yeah. is good. Uh, mine, you've guessed one of them, which was Pissing in the Wind. Uh, other is Bewilder Beast. I know we've already mentioned that one anyway, but that's definitely in my top three. Yeah, I do I love that. Love that song. You only didn't make it because it is an instrumental and I have right. to take into the fact that I don't actually like the instrumentals yeah usually and Stone on the Water 
for me as well. I don't well. even remember that one, to be honest. We'll have to listen to it afterwards because <laughs> copyright, yay. Yeah. Is there any songs that you hate? You've already said Body Rap. Body Rap. Um, there was something similar, um, like a shot. It's like a... It's not a song as so much as like an intermission in the album. I can't remember which one it is, but there's a song towards the end of the album that's like a short, not it, song. Well, the one there is one one song on there that I disliked, and that was the one called "This Song." Especially mm. listening to it in headphones, it's got very rapid panning left and right in it. Uh, and, I think I know which one you mean. Yeah, I don't like that one either. Yeah, it just sounds <laughs> like I think if it was to have been not with a rapid panning. I would have enjoyed the song because it's a nice song. It's just it gives me a bit of a headache listening to it because of the strange yeah. production of it. No, like we were just saying we love the production of it. <laughs> this album. Yeah. It's actually not that good. No, just that one song I didn't like the production of, but the rest of it I think is like fantastic. Yeah. Overall, out of 10? Um, for the first half of the album... <laughs> Yeah, for the, I think for the overall it would be... What would a ranking system? I'll put that on the screen for the YouTube video so that you can see it, but for the sake of your... I'm going to go with a six. Are you? Yeah. Just because half of it's not that memorable. Right. <laughs> Similarly to last week, how we were saying you're the harsh scorer. <laughs> for me, like it was very, very much to my taste almost all the way through, except from this song. Mm. It was a nine for me. Nice. It was an almost, like, I've been listening to it even before we said we'll be doing this album this week. I was listening to it over and over again anyway. So it is almost bang on for me. Yeah, I, I can't imagine going back and listening to it. I don't know. No, not the whole album. Maybe yeah. like the first few songs I'd uh, like many download times. to a playlist. Yeah, if I go in like Costa doing some studying or something, it's usually that album that's gone on. Hip. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So something that you may think is the right decision but I disagreed with is there's been six editions of a thousand and one albums you must listen to before you die yeah that um this album was in the first edition second edition third edition then it was cut Mm. so it's not in it anymore it's not considered an album you must listen to before (laughs) you die I had my pitchfork and torch at the ready to try and trample down Robert Dimmery which one are we listening to then? What is it based off? What does... All of them. The oh, generator right. that I've got is any song that's, well, any album that's been in any of Ever the editions. Been. Oh, right, yeah. okay. So I so think in total, there's around 1,080. Even though it's 1,001 albums, there's mm. about 1,080 that's on the playlist. Okay, cool. So, yeah. One of the things that the album reminded me of, do you remember the JCB song by Niz Lopey? Mm-hmm. So how that was very sort of, I guess kind of, it's from the perspective of like a child with a hyperactive imagination, isn't it? He's just in a JCB with his dad, but in his head, like he's Luke, he's five and his dad's Bruce Lee. Like, (laughs) um, This album kind of like gave me the same sort of vibes on it, of it. It makes me think of like a kid that's sat by a river. There is a song called Camping by the River. So kind of sat there maybe with his family waiting for this fantastical bewilder beast to come out it yeah. so, seems very much like a coming of age sort of feel throughout it and that loss of imagination as mm-hmm. you get older can relate yeah 100% <laughs> because as we've just said we're stuck in a book with music we're stuck in a book in our lives <laughs> <laughs> that'll probably is, is there anything else you want to comment on before we wrap it up um no i think i'm no. Um... cool so next week uh we're thinking herbie hancock Herbie that means Hancock. I have to listen to it again. <laughs> the album Headhunters by Herbie Hancock. No spoilers here for what we think on the album. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, tune in again next week. Yeah. And like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, do that. <laughs> and oh yeah, I hope that you like the artwork that I did for the podcast. I'll kind of thank you for tuning in to me. Mu- oh, um, the scores are at the top, so we're on two 0 for. Good music versus bad music. Oh, we're choosing. That was good. And you said <laughs> six is over five. Yeah, okay. So it'll it'll average out to seven and a half. And we're not going to have a third column for... Meh. Because some of the albums are going to fall into that. It's good or it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Should be fair if it's meh, it's bad, isn't it? Because you're yeah. not going to listen to it. Yeah. Enough. So, yeah, that's us. And I'll see you next week. Bye then.